bigger than NFTs. Yep, yep, yep. Talk about it. Um, I'm nasty with that. What? Disney's going to go so hard with that. Pokemon, get in there. Dude, Pokemon. Big, so, Pokemon AR, Pokemon Go AR with certifiably owned things. <laughs> I mean, out of town. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> when those Apple glasses come on, out, oh, God damn, game over. Cert- certifiably owned, dude. Pokemon AR was just a little ahead of its time. They, at least they have people have some mind share at least at this point but when you can get some just just like yeah this is m- definitely my meowto meow meowto you're just fucking battling someone you're like you have fucking meowto you too or whatever there's only three of those bro <laughs> that's what i was saying dude certifiably um that's nasty stuff like that yeah the coinbase nft thing is interesting just because coinbase is probably the least friction and the most popular brand of crypto stuff for the layman um i don't know it's gonna be interesting to see <laughs> what people do with nfts i think it's gonna be some shit we didn't even we haven't even named it it's gonna be but, or fucking nothing not, happens it dies and it never not even in the long term but in the short term what people are gonna because it, it seems like I'm on Coinbase blog. It says, uh, what can you do with NFTs? Good question. Some people display their digital artworks on large monitor. What? How is that your first sentence? <laughs> yeah, that's fucking dumb. Like- what can you do? <laughs> what? Just in the put on the perception of Coinbase, a big loyalty driven brand of, of people using crypto early and, and not very tech savvy. Good question. Some people display their digital artworks on large large monitors. Some buy virtual real estate via NFT, of course, in which they're able to build virtual galleries or museums. You can also roam virtual worlds like Decentraland and check out other people's collections. For some fans, the appeal is the in the buying and selling, much like any other asset class. The collector who sold people made a lot of money. More and more mainstream artists have gotten into gotten involved in the space especially from the world of music oh okay so they put music art virtual real estate kings of leon announced their next album would arrive in the form of multiple nfts depending on which a fan buys various perks will be unlocked like alternate art cover art limited edition vinyl and even a golden ticket to a vip concert experience so would it be coinbase is phrasing not to cut you off sorry but i'm i am uh real estate art speculative asset and content creation and ownership of music can you foresee us going back to an era of scarce music see that's that's a very interesting question my my guy Ian dunlap was was talking about how streaming will die in about 2027 and i do believe (laughs) whoa what a what a wild statement hey man i he's he's earned my trust a lot at least die down by the the, the peak at 2027. Oh, fuck. Um, like, there's only like 50,000 Drake certified lover boy NFTs, and you can only listen to it if you 2027, have it. 2027, man. 2027. Um, yeah, I, I, I do think that this it, it puts the power in individuals' hands potentially. I'm sure you have bigger institutions with money being like, we can do a lot of this stuff for you. Come sign with our now nft based record label yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. um fuck but uh it's it's basically you crowdfunding your own career with with most content creation if you have fans and cool experiences how do you get the public to basically revert back to the mindset yo there's only so many copies of this music i gotta get it before it sells out especially in music man especially in music culture they already have a scarcity model of there's a, this is a limited run of this shirt this is a limited run of sneakers so especially i mean in the hip-hop scarcity is just an interesting thought to think about Damn. why is that kind of only in in a it's not only but when i think of limited run stuff i think of hip-hop aka black culture you're gonna have these kids that grew up in the that like born into the streaming age and they're gonna be like what i gotta buy music and then like you hear it anywhere else it's it's automatically copyright infringement yeah 
Yeah, the ownership of everything. I, I was saying to to your boy Sean Lee that right now I, there there was something I posted by a, an artist called uh, L- Lauren Lorange, mm-hmm. um, and he he put up a thing on Instagram. He was like, I I got into a record store and someone was buying my album that I created, right? And Lorange was like, Oh, that's that's my album. He he like like Oh, that's my album. And the person buying it was like, No, this is it's my album. I'm buying it. And so Sean Lee was like, well, what is, do you own your music when it's in the public? And I said, well, you own the right for other people to own it, but not own the right for people not to own it. So I was like, as a, as a music creator slash artist slash record label, you own the, you kind of own the right for other people not to own it. Own, you own the yeah. right for other people not to own the rights to your music. That's kind of what you own. Um, and then purchasers do own a, a a physical piece or a digital download to listen to, and that's kind of that's your right as a consumer. And then you know, with NFTs and the scarcity model of music, you kind of have. Explicit ownership over a certain title. That's kind of like, you know, how you can you buy a Mac and you own it, but you can't change it. Anything yeah. about it? Like you buy a piece of music and what, what's that called? It's, it's non module, not modular. Yeah. And there's like this whole right to repair thing to go on. That's kind of like the same thing with music. Like, okay, I bought this, bought this CD. Why can't I change it? Or, yeah redistribute change it and redistribute it you know because they bake that into the model where you, you can't <laughs> someone says you can't do that or else we'll come for some money that's interesting but that that's also kind of just you know like most things in human life it's kind of just a social construct but you also have <clears throat> in that vein you can see if people are distributing and and remixing things if you have some metadata in, in the digital description of something. Fucking hell, dude. These NFTs. These NFTs, I see it so clear. I don't see it clearly, but I understand it clearly. Just like the more I read about blockchain, I'm just like, dude, this shit's going to be nasty. The olds won't get it, but the youngs will. What do, what do you think you're increasingly understanding? Well, the more I realize how blockchain represents scarcity yeah i'm just like okay now this this just gives so many things like value you know yes yeah. people love scare shit <laughs> yeah they fucking love scare shit dude like i see i find a coin it says total supply like 500 i'm like bro i want that i don't know what it is but there's only 500 of them i know it's gonna go up a lot or something but yeah i mean that's that that takes something to your brain i think if you do really break it down very generally uh part i don't know one of like three parts of what crypto did was make things scarce on digital platforms and that's that's what people have been i think that's what people have been saying for a long time and it's kind of been lost in the in the bull market of media talking about crypto Mm -hmm. at least i don't know in general but that is one of the big selling points of they're like, yo, we figured out how to make things.